to the Be The Push podcast. My name's Jack Ferguson, and I'm here to bring you the best minds in small business and entrepreneurship. Through these conversations, I want to provide you with actionable advice that helps you take the next step in your business journey. The show notes for the episodes can be found at bethepush.com forward slash podcast, and then just click on the relevant episode. Let's get started. Hello and welcome to another episode of the podcast. Today, my guest is Joe Fox, who is a social media expert. And we have a a great conversation about social media, um, no doubt, about where it is now, where Joe thinks it will go in the future. And um, yeah, he makes a few predictions that are quite interesting. We also talk about him being nominated for Young Entrepreneur of the Year Award Uh, what that involves, we touch on branding, uh, the importance of the go-giver approach, um, which I'm not overly familiar with, but I I learned a bit about it in this episode, and also switching off, um, something I definitely struggle with, um, and I'd ask Joe how he goes about doing it. As always, the show notes can be found at bethepush.com forward slash podcast. I hope you enjoy the episode. All right, so today we're here with Joe Fox. Joe, how are you doing? Fantastic. Thanks for having me here today. No worries. Um, so Joe is the MD the, or the Managing Director of Studio Culture and was a finalist in for the Brisbane Young Entrepreneur of the Year Award in 2015. Is that correct? Yep, yeah, that's good. correct. How did that come about? Um, that came about, I guess, from our extensive range of charity work that we did with One Punch Can Kill predominantly. Um, okay. We were identified as making um, quite a significant cultural impact in Brisbane in that regard, um, as well as some of the exciting work we we're doing with our clients at that stage. Cool. So so just tell us what One Punch Can Kill is. Um, so One Punch Can Kill is an anti-violence campaign. So it's aimed predominantly at high school students. Um, it's purely anti- anti-violence. It's a non-for-profit organisation. Um, it sometimes receives government funding. It sometimes doesn't. Um, but it's all about spreading the message of keeping your hands to yourself and violence isn't the answer. Cool. Yeah, I think it's a good message. Definitely. <laughs> um, definitely. So did you, what, did you just get a tap on the shoulder for that? or do you um, So what actually happened for us to get involved with that is um, Bill and myself, when we started the business, when we started the agency, Um, is unfortunately around the same time that we started. One of my friends um, was actually a victim of a a one-punch assault. Um, It was quite serious. He spent some time in hospital um, and is very, very, very lucky um, to still be with us. Wow, sorry to hear that. No, no, it's it's all good now. Um, He's living a very positive life and he's he's very much obviously an anti-violence advocate himself. Mm -hmm. Um, But... Yeah, we reached out to One Punch Can Kill through Twitter of all things. So, okay. of course, through social media. Yep. Um, and we identified that there was an opportunity to help them with their marketing. Um, and that's what we did. Sure. And, and if I can ask, if that experience didn't happen, you don't you don't think um, that would have come about? Um, to be honest, I think it was that I didn't really see too much being done in that space. Sure. Um, I felt that space was very open um obviously when you get passionate about things you want to get involved in them mm-hmm. um, and i certainly think that was probably the thing that sparked um, us wanting to be involved um and i also think that it's about opportunities and turning negative things into positive things so cool yeah no that sounds great so so where did it all begin for you when did you decide that you wanted to be a business owner or an entrepreneur um do you, do, do you what do you refer to yourself as I, I honestly, I, I'm not a, a huge fan of the word entrepreneur. I, I yep. love to just say business owner. Sure, um, yeah. I, I, so I, I, I love the entrepreneurial spirit, spirit that's being built into younger people these days. Mm-hmm. But I've always just referred to myself as a business owner. Yep. Um, I think I've always liked to help people. So I think it's always kind of been something that's ingrained um, into me. When did I have my first business? I think I was probably selling Pokemon cards and stuff for a profit when oh, I was super really? young. Yeah. But, um, <laughs> um, uh, in terms of wanting to start this business, um, I would have been, I'm just trying to think, I feel old now. Um, I would have been 24 when I started this business okay. with my business partner. Yep. Um, so, or, or when I got into the, the digital agency side of things. Um, the reason I wanted to get into business is I've always liked helping people. Yep. Um, and the reason I've wanted to be in the in the creative space is because I think that there's a lot of opportunity to help um, solve business issues with creativity. Mm-hmm. 
And what were you like at school? At school, um, I was not uh, a good kid at school, to be honest. Really? Yeah, I actually, um, I actually, funnily enough, um, I I was asked to leave the private school that I attended up until uh, grade eleven, and then I changed over to a different school. Okay. Um, I I was always distracted. I was sure. I was always the I was always the Joe has tremendous potential, but he's always distracted. Mm. Um, I I was more. Uh, interested in the social side of school, okay, and and relating to people and that yeah. sort of thing. Yeah, but ironically, that's sort of um, you know the skills that you kind of need in business, right? Definitely, yeah. definitely. Um, yeah, I'm I'm a uh, I'm a bit of an anti advocate for the current education system. Sure. To, yep. to be honest, I think yep. there's a lot of room for overhaul and improvement, mm-hmm. um, and, and a lot of a focus on those social side of skills. Yeah, that I don't necessarily think schools currently, schools or universities currently. Um, work on enough mm. with students. Well, I think I think um, relationship building is going to be a huge one of those because, I mean, I, I came out, I was pretty, you know, I went to uni and all that, but I, I, when I started business, I was very poor at it. You know, I'd go for the quick win and that type of thing. And it, it takes, you know, that took a few years for me to realise, no, you have to play the long game. You have to get to know people before you, you know, ask them to marry you. So to speak, you know, you don't <laughs> yeah. ask someone to marry you on the first date. Definitely. I think that's how the saying goes. Definitely. Um, there's a really good book on that, actually. Um, it's uh, Matthew Dunstan, who's involved here, um, passed it on to me. And um, it's, it's called The Go-Giver. And it's my absolute all-time favorite ah, cool. business yep. book. Um, and it very much relies on that on that principle of giver's gain. Yep. Um, and I, I think if you constantly give and add value to mm-hmm. people um it always it always comes around in return and whether yep. that's in business relationships personal relationships um it, it always works like that and did you always know that you should do that or was that something that kind of hit you one day as oh wow i've got to try this approach instead in, in terms of relationship building or the go-giver point? approach i suppose um i feel like i've always been someone who's more than happy to take time out of my day to to listen to other people and what they're going through and what mm-hmm. their current experiences are um i felt like i always especially in high school probably played that counselor position sure. to, to yep. my friends about anything from relationships to anything and i was lucky enough to have a lot of people who did the same for me um so I think I've always tried to be a good person. I think listening to people and helping yeah. people um, is a fundamental to business. And mm-hmm. yes, I guess so. I, ser- I certainly had to had to learn it. So I'm, I'm very envious that you, oh, okay. you, you just had it. <laughs> no, no, I, I no, I, I um, yeah, I, I guess I always have. Like, I, certainly confidence um, built, mm-hmm. like being built, that definitely took some time. But mm. um, I've always wanted to be there to sort of help people and. Okay. And more than happy to take the time out of my day to do that. And did you um, did you go to university or did I you? Didn't. Okay. I didn't. I didn't actually. Cool. Um, to to be one hundred percent honest, I didn't even finish grade twelve. Oh right. Yeah. Okay. So um, since I've I've studied a diploma online, um, mm-hmm. for marketing just mm-hmm. to get the basics and that sort of thing. Yeah. Um, but once again, um, and this this comes back to sort of my thoughts on on education is that um, I use Twitter and mm. resources like that to. Um, learn what every sort of expert in our industry uh, was doing mm. um, years before people had even heard of them, like mm-hmm. Gary Vaynerchuk and that sort of thing. I've been following it for years. I know he's blowing up now. I've mm-hmm. been following him for a good four and a half years, reading, yeah. his, yep. co- reading his content, watching his videos, um, finding out what his thoughts are on those sorts of things. So I think industry um, expert-based knowledge yep. um, and industry expert-based education is key. Yep. Because um, you, you're learning from people who are passionate about something. Mm-hmm. They're not teaching to a curriculum um, and it's fluid. The, mm. the way that mm-hmm. everything is moving in the world at the moment is so fluid yep. and happening so quick. Yep. Um, you, you need to learn from people who are adjusting to it and living it in real time. Mm-hmm. Okay, so from that, I, I, I try to stop myself from bashing formal education every episode. Um, but since you've brought it up, we can talk about it. We can. <laughs> it's we not my we fault. Can. We can. Um, but I, I have two questions. So answer them in whatever order you like. But um, can you talk us through your, you, your view on education and what's not so good about it? And also, I just want to know if you did get anything out of your diploma. I have to be I have to be super sensitive here because we have a, a few clients in the education space. Sure. But I'll, I'll be I'll be honest because that's mm-hmm. the sort of person I am. Um, I do think formal education does have a place in society. Mm-hmm. Do I think it has a place in the whole entrepreneurial side of things? 
absolutely not. Yeah. Um, and, and once again, I'll go back to that um, industry professional based learning. Mm-hmm. I think you've got things like um, Udemy, Skillshare, mm-hmm. where you can mm-hmm. actually learn from experts. Yeah. And um, when you need to as well. You can. When you, yeah. when you need to. Yeah. I, I mean, like, it's so accessible. I mean, um, why should we all have to run on a certain curriculum and, mm-hmm. and, and, and time schedule and all of those sorts of things? I think the way that we live now and technology has made everything so accessible, yep. um, why not learn from an expert on the other side of the world at two o'clock in the morning when mm-hmm. you can't sleep and you need to solve a problem? Mm-hmm. I think there's so much resource out there um, that, that doesn't get you into debt mm. and doesn't get you into a huge amount of debt. Yeah. I mean, um, and that's the one you don't think about, right? So you, you leave school and you go to university, but you you don't you don't think about the money. Oh, well, I, I didn't, and I know a lot of my peers. We, you just don't think about it because you can just do it, and it's a debt, right? So I'll just pay it off later. Who cares? And then one day you realize, ah, oh, that's real money. I have to pay back. One hundred percent. I mean, I mean, it's like um, I think our generation, um, so yeah, Gen Y, um, and younger are not uptaking in in debt like we mm. we don't want credit cards mm. like it's it's we've learned that we've mm-hmm. seen our parents go through that that we've seen our older brothers and sisters go through that and we don't want debt mm-hmm. so i think the same sort of thing ever exists in the in the university and formal education area where it's like you know people are starting to realize i don't have to necessarily get myself in debt i can follow my passion I'm starting to see that switch, and that's exciting. Mm, mm. And and what about the diploma? I mean, I I mean, I do marketing myself, and I'm I'm quite skeptical you could learn much from a diploma. But um, feel feel free to correct me. Look, to be honest, I I learnt a lot surprisingly about account management. Like okay, there was, yep. there's quite a lot of stuff around, like um, I, I guess that traditional ad agency style of things are mm-hmm. around, like um, you know, how to deal with clients and and all of that sort of thing. I found that useful. Um. I guess some key industry terms were useful, um, but to be honest, yeah, de- definitely utilizing Twitter, reaching out. Like a, lo- mm-hmm. a lot of the people I reached out to, um, people who've you know written books on Twitter and all of that sort of thing. I've had um, you know a few very small Twitter conversations with Gary Vee here and there. Mm-hmm. Um, those people were more than happy to share knowledge. Mm-hmm. Those people were more than happy to reach out. So utilizing those resources was far more valuable than a diploma. Mm-hmm. But I do think formal education has a place. Yeah, yeah. In, in some things, like um, yeah. I mean, you need to know how to read and write, right? And def- you know, yeah, basic definitely, maths is definitely. useful. And yeah. I think, I mean, you know, if if you're going, if you're going to be a lawyer, mm. oh, of know, or an accountant, yeah. or doctor, or any of those sort of things, where the fundamentals are um, not necessarily going to change, mm. um, I, I, I certainly think there's well and truly a place yeah. for that. Yeah, cool. Um, but I am impressed. I must say, with the way that um, some of the universities are mm. adapting mm. to, I mean, I mean, we get a lot of um, interns from QUT and that sort of thing. It's interesting to see that they're introducing a lot of that sort of education that's very real time based, um, and getting industry professionals in to do lectures and that sort of thing. Mm. Cool. So, so you leave school, and what do you do now? Um, oh, when I left school. Yeah, what, do, what did you do after you oh, left so school? I actually was a tradesperson. Um, oh, right. So, yeah, so I did an apprenticeship um, in commercial roofing and that was probably, that's probably been my biggest, um, I guess, motivator to do what I do now is because it's like... How come? I never want to go back to doing uh, okay. any of that. Um, yep. Like physical work was just never something that I wanted to do, but my peer group at the time were all doing that. So okay. I was like, okay, I'm going to do that. Mm-hmm. Um, it gave me a lot of experience in hard work because mm-hmm. it is the hardest work i think you <laughs> I can, can imagine yeah. in your life i wouldn't and, last a day <laughs> yeah and you just ha- and you just have to get it done like there's yeah. there's no choice so it definitely you know sort of taught me about um about hard work and and having a good work ethic um it also i guess really taught me what i don't want to do mm-hmm. and I, I think that was the biggest thing it, it kind of just got to a point where it's just like i really just don't want to do this anymore mm-hmm. it was good money it, you know it kept me extremely fit mm-hmm. but um yeah i just got to a point where i was like enough's enough mm. and i've always it was really interesting as a kid actually and i had this conversation with my mum a couple of weeks back but i used to be the kid who used to fast forward um you know recorded things on on vcr mm-hmm. that's how old i am <laughs> um but and, and would fast forward to see the ads because mm. I was always obsessed with that. Oh, right, okay. And um, my mum's cousin 
um, who I've been sort of kept in contact with for quite some time and he still works in the industry down in Sydney. He was um, an ad man and did a lot of stuff with Optus and that sort of thing. And I reached out to him when I was like, how do I get into the industry? What should I do? Um, and he's like, digital. And it was kind of like, okay. And so I really started self-exploring from that point. Okay. Um, I was working part-time still doing my trade. So yep. I still had a good amount of money doing the diploma and then just learning as much as I could. Yeah. And what was your first job in, in this space? Uh, in this space. So my um, ex-girlfriend at the time, she owned a company um, and I started implementing all of the social media web um, management, all of those sorts of things and really got a good idea of every element of it, self-taught a whole lot of things. Mm -hmm. Um, Then I came across Google Engage for agencies, which was my first step into really getting getting a solid grasp of the way that everything works in terms yeah. of Google. Can you, can you explain to us what that is? Oh, so Google Engage, um, it's changed now. It's it's Google Partners now, but Google Engage was the, the sort of education that Google offered for agencies. Okay. So whether it was someone such as myself who was a freelancer um, and, and doing work for clients of their own mm-hmm. or whether it's an agency, um, Google provided this training. So... Mm-hmm. Um, that's actually where my, my business partner. So okay. Yep. We both met at a Google AdWords convention. Sure. Um, here at the entertainment, c- no, not the entertainment center. Um, the convention center. Convention maybe. center. Yeah. <laughs> I can see center. for the listeners, I can actually see where Joe's pointing. So. <laughs> um, and yeah, so that was where I met my business partner. Um, and we sort of got to a point where we were referring each other work. So mm-hmm. I sort of at that stage... Um, felt like I was quite comfortable over social media marketing and that mm. sort of thing. Um, and my business partner is an absolutely amazing um, guy. He has the talent to be able to design um, as well as develop. Sure. And he's amazing at both. Um, and I guess it sort of just got to a point where we were for referring each other so much work. We said, mm. let's, let's give it a go and mm-hmm. let's make this happen. And um, yeah, that was just under three years ago now. So what did the what did the landscape of social media marketing look like when you when you got in the game? <laughs> um, <laughs> it was it was it was a lot different. Uh, yep. I must be honest. Um, it's it's interesting with social media because you work with it every day and there's something changing every day. It's hard to think back. Mm-hmm. But I think thinking back, the I mean Instagram wasn't there yet. Mm-hmm. Um, Twitter Twitter still like had a lot more usability than it does now mm-hmm. um, and Facebook was everything mm-hmm. yeah. yeah and it's interesting the thing I find about Facebook and the thing I've found about Facebook the whole time is it always has its part and it's always what I consider the most relevant sure and I don't know if it's because they were predominantly first to market mm. um, but I think what they've done is just amazing. A few years ago, that gravy train where, you know, if you had 2,000 likes on your page and you posted something and they'd all see it, <laughs> that was that was handy. Definitely, yeah, yeah. back before algorithm changes yeah. and that sort of thing. It was amazing. Yeah. Um, that's the thing. And, I mean, people like Gary Vee say this all the time, though, is, is marketers ruin everything mm-hmm. because as soon as we start, you know, finding a little trick to be able to make clients a, a lot of money for um, not as much investment to a lot of return for little investment Mm -hmm. Uh, we all jump on it Mm -hmm. (laughs) and then it kind of becomes one of those things where facebook and google and those sorts of things turn around and say no we want to make more money out of it yeah so but yeah yeah, that's that's half the fun of the social media game though Mm. so can you tell us uh where do you see a lot of people go wrong with their we'll start off with social media marketing i know you've got other expertise but if we can talk about that for a minute um where do people go wrong predominantly do you think I think the main sort of place, and I, I say this um, uh, about every sort of aspect of marketing and every aspect of business, is that people always start without a plan. Okay. I think social media, a lot of people just sit there and think, I'm just going to chuck up images of anything I think my audience might like that's to do with my business and expect some sort of a return. Mm-hmm. And I think... The, it, it comes back to that go-giver mentality. Um, I mean, a lot of people will sit there and just be like, focus on themselves or focus on their business or mm-hmm. buy my stuff, buy my stuff, buy my stuff. Be me, and me. Definitely, yep. 100%. And, yep. it, and, and it's that lack of planning and organization and understanding mm. of the way that social media is or even the understanding of 
the the bias psyche um, mm-hmm. that I think is the biggest mistake that people make. Okay, so how can we get into the bias psyche? What are some ways that you you I, go about that? I think it, it it certainly depends on what sort of business mm-hmm. you, you have. So I mean, if you're a services based business, um, then customer service is key because. And, and that's the sort of content that people are going to want to see. They're mm-hmm. going to want to see other customers being happy. They're going to want to see how you go above and beyond to make your customers happy. That's mm-hmm. that's the services, mm-hmm. I guess, sort of aspect in a nutshell. Um, the get, getting in there from, I, I guess, the um, the if you're if you're selling a product or something like that, I guess it's identifying who your audience is Mm -hmm. and I think there's there's a lot of tools out there Mm -hmm. um, to to be able to identify who your key audience is Mm -hmm. I mean simplest thing would be looking at you know what your competitors are doing Mm -hmm. in that space yep Um, and can you list some of those tools for us yeah (laughs) certainly I mean I I guess the easiest one and I I think this is so relevant to all aspects of digital marketing Mm -hmm. is really get a good understanding of Google Analytics yeah I think um, you know we're um, certainly in a in a day and age where if you don't understand how to interpret some elements of data yep and I'm not taking away f- uh, I mean there's people who know so much about how to read data it's it's crazy and mm. it's so imp- I get so impressed by people that can do that mm-hmm. but I think everyone should be able to understand some basic data mm-hmm. um, and I think there's no sort of easier platform than Google Analytics to be able to identify um, some key some yep. key metrics around your business yeah. So, what about Facebook Insights? You fan uh, of Facebook that? Insights is, is is okay. Yep. But there's definitely um, some other tools and that, and that sort of thing. I might keep some of the secret sauce for ourselves. Oh, uh, sure. But <laughs> um, but yeah, fa- Facebook Insights once again, fa- fantastic tool mm-hmm. um, to be able to gain insight on on your audience. Once again, um, Facebook makes it extremely visual. Mm-hmm. Um, and I guess that's the other thing about Facebook and Google is that mm-hmm. they want you to spend more money with them. Mm-hmm. So they're going to help you as much as possible because mm-hmm. the more they help you gain insight into your business and your audience, yep. the more you're going to spend on Facebook ads or Google ads. Yeah, cool. So so you talked about planning. Um, I, I suppose the challenge with social media is, uh, you, you know, you see um, some companies like Oreos. Was a, a, you, did you see that Super Bowl ad that they did where, where the lights went off in the stadium and they, they, they put up, you can still dunk in the dark and the post went crazy? Yes. Um, is there an element where you have to you do have to be ready for that, you know, ad hoc type I scenario though? Or, do, or do, you, do, you, do you think it's better just to have your month or your two months planned ahead with all your... Oh, when I say planning, I don't necessarily mean um, like pre-scheduling content and okay. that sort of thing. Okay. I think um, for businesses and especially smaller businesses, you, you're better off utilizing um, the, I mean, I know you don't have heaps of time, but I think you're better off taking the time in making sure that you're crafting each of those posts correctly and you're mm-hmm. consistently putting out content. Mm-hmm. So I think that element of doing things live I- I is great and posting live and not necessarily scheduling all of the time. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I refer more to planning as to, um, you know, sort of identifying the type of content that, that you uh, want to okay. put out there yep. and, and, and sort of working out what your goals with social media and that sort of thing are. Is it is it about getting your brand out there to more people or do you really want to generate mm. a sales platform? Mm. No, that's very interesting um, because because I think that, um, that yeah, we, 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 we don't want to have that high-level conversation sometimes, right, though, because that's it's hard. <laughs> it is. It is. I think you have to get, like, with, with social media and with social media content, you have to start getting really honest about, mm. about your business and, mm. and what it is that you do and... Um, it, it can be a difficult sort of conversation to have and it, mm-hmm. can, it, it can be a different, uh, difficult creative process as mm. well. And so when you're consulting a new client, like I'm assuming, assuming you ask these type of questions, um, do they usually have sort of some sort of an epiphany in that meeting or consultation with you? Like, wow, I haven't been asked that before or I haven't thought about what our audience, who they, who they even are. Is that a common... Yeah, definitely. I, I mean, it, it certainly depends on the size of the business. Sure. Um, yep. could, like, um, de- definitely, we, we do see... Um, I mean, in, in saying that, though, I've had some conversations with some business owners who are so incredibly insightful mm. in terms of the value that they add to their clients. Mm-hmm. So having those conversations with them is fantastic mm-hmm. because 
I see it from a social media side of things. Our team sees it from a social media side of things, mm -hmm. but they really understand their business. So mm. that's that's perfect. Or you're working with a marketing manager who's got a whole bunch of data that you can have a look at and going through that data with them, you all come up with the insights at once. And mm -hmm. that's a really good eureka moment as well. And, mm. and they you can see that sort of change in their face and they understand it. So mm. Mm. Cool. So are you do you consider yourself a branding expert as well? Um I, I, to be honest, I, th I, I don't like referring to myself as an yeah, expert. Yeah, okay. Um, like, uh, I have been incredibly lucky in the fact that um, I, as I said, like to listen to people and get to understand people. I think I'm fantastic at identifying um, people's problems mm -hmm. um, and working out how people can solve them. And mm -hmm. I think that's the fantastic thing about the team that we've got now. Mm -hmm. um, do I think I have experts at branding in my team? 100%. Okay. Um, it, can you talk to us a bit about that? Because I think that's sort of um, somewhat of a dark art. Like, I mean, it, people will think of branding, they'll think of a lot of, um, you know, like colours and um, layouts, I suppose. Is that what it is to you? I really feel like... What I feel branding, I think, I feel branding is the feeling you get when you hear a company name or you see a company logo or um, or you think of the customer service you've received from, uh, from a company or a business. Mm -hmm. I think it's the warm and fuzzy part. I, I, I truly do. Mm. I think it's, it, it's like translating, I'm trying to think of how to phrase this correctly. Mm. It's like translating... Um, something that's visual into a feeling. Mm. So a brand is a feeling to I you? I feel like a brand is a feeling to Wow, me. okay. That's, yeah, it's very deep, but yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, one, of the, one of the good, one of the um, definitions I really like um, that I heard a long time ago, and sorry for whoever's definition this is that I'm stealing, but a brand is a promise kept. I like that. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I like that. I'm trying to think. I wonder if that's like Ogilvy or someone. I think mm. I feel like that must have been one of the one of the masters from back in the day. But yeah, I, I I like that. I think it's true. I think it's um, you shouldn't ever. I don't think you should ever feel disappointment towards a brand. Mm. And I think that's why you hear about a lot of these things that get picked up mm -hmm. is because brands are built on reputation mm. and consistency. Mm -hmm. And I think when those things waver, mm -hmm. people feel the need to attack because they feel let down by that brand, mm. so, which very much falls into yeah. <laughs> into that line. I yeah. like it. I mean, I mean, the days are over, I think, of the over-promising and under-delivering. You, you, you just can't you do it anymore. You cannot do that. Yeah. You cannot do that. Like, that's that's. I pride myself on that as a salesperson mm. is, is always um, under-promising and over-delivering. Mm -hmm. And um, I love that I have a team where we can do that. Cool. So, so when someone thinks of their brand, what would – What's the first question they should ask themselves, like as a business owner or there might be just some of the listeners might be just about to get into business. What is that first question they should be saying or asking themselves? I think the first, the first question should always be, can I add value? Oh, really? Okay. Yeah. yeah. As a brand, I think, um, or, or as a business or, or as a company starting up, it's, it's can I add value in the market? Mm. It is my idea viable. Okay. Second question. <laughs> Second question. <laughs> um, I, th I think a lot of the time too, and I, I, I think we're starting to see this a little bit in Silicon Valley and those sorts of things, is that a lot of people are focusing on, um, focusing on creating an idea and that sort of thing with no plan of monetization mm -hmm. and, and everything in it. And, um, a brand or business needs cash to mm -hmm. survive. Mm -hmm. um, and I think that would be the second question I would ask is, can I add value and can I charge for that value? Wow. So I find that fascinating because that's, um, we're not talking, we haven't talked about colors yet. We haven't talked about outlayers. And I guess once again, that yeah. comes back to, to, to the brand side of thing yep. is, is, is and, and back to the line you said about mm. a promise kept is, mm. um, you know, can I deliver on that promise? Mm. So how long down the track do we start to think of those, the, the stereotypical things that you associate with a branding exercise, I uh, suppose? Names and, and yeah. colours and yeah. all that sort of thing. I, I, I definitely think it's something to to start thinking from at the start. Mm -hmm. um, but I necessarily, like, I mean, 
there's all sorts of things to consider when you're even just looking at colors and that sort of thing. Like yep. um, green means refreshing and change and those sorts of things. When yeah, you've got okay. your, your blues and that sort of thing, that's why you often associate them with like um, law firms and that sort of thing, for example, or, or financial institutions and that sort of thing often use the blue and the white is because that's a trust sort okay. of thing. Um, red often means excitement and, and a call to action. Mm-hmm. Um, orange definitely means excitement. So I think... Those things are all extremely relevant Mm -hmm. um, and they are things to consider near the start. But I think it's like any business venture, you've you've got to make sure you've got a business idea. Okay, cool. Um, All right, so now you are the managing director of Studio Studio Culture. You said you started that about three years ago. Yes. Um, What did you, what was that first year like in business? For yourself? It was tough. Tell me, tell us us about the challenges. To to be honest, like um, I, I loved it. I I really liked that stage Mm -hmm. of business. Um, I mean, I spent so much time with Phil, um, like my business partner. It was awesome. Like we really got to know each other Mm -hmm. um, really, really well. Um, We sort of like would look at at things that I would look at now and think it's not even a challenge, but maybe back then we saw them as a challenge and we'd Mm -hmm. just work out a way to to work around it. Mm -hmm. Um, There was lots of lots and lots of um sleepless nights there yeah. was lots and lots of stress I, mm-hmm. I, i'd be lying if i said it was amazing yep um are you on top of that now would you say on top of your stress well and truly well wow. yeah well and truly i wow. think i think it comes down to um i, I guess where we're at in the business now is okay. that where is that at the startup phase you're doing everything mm. right? like it's, it's like you just you gotta do everything mm. whereas now we're, we've been really really blessed into the fact that we have a proper business, so we can mm-hmm. afford to get people in who are doing our books. We can get, um, you know, people in to give us advice about finance. We can get a proper accountant in mm-hmm. um, instead of trying to do everything ourselves. Yeah. So yeah. it's it's kind of it, it's a different stress. Yeah, definitely. Because I mean, um, we've you know I've eight salaries to provide mm. for, so mm-hmm. it's it's a different stress, um, as well as you know. 35 plus clients to make sure that they're happy and and, yeah. and all of that sort of thing. Mm-hmm. So it's well and truly a different stress. Mm-hmm. But um, are you able to switch off? Am I able to switch off? Yeah. Look, <laughs> <laughs> I I um I find like I bounce off people. I thrive okay. off being around people. I'm yep. an extremely social person. Yep. But I also need my me time. Sure. Um, I meditate. Okay. Which has been fantastic yep. for us daily. Um, I, I do do it daily. Oh, right. I'm supposed to do it twice daily, but wow. I only do it once daily. I'd, take, I'd take once daily. It's our client. Do you know Troy? Troy. No, what's his last name? Troy Drake. He's no. in here. Oh, okay. I'll, sh- I'll link to him in the show notes. Yeah, you should. Yeah, you should definitely definitely have a chat to him. But um, yeah, I, I love meditating. Mm-hmm. It's like I know that I should do it more, mm. but when I do do it, it's it's amazing. Mm-hmm. Like it actually does allow you to de-stress. Mm. It makes you more intuitive, and it gives you clarity about how to deal with certain things and all of that sort of thing. Um, Do I know how to switch off? No. No? (laughs) No, to be honest, no. No. But I'm fine with that. Like um, like I'm I'm working on another business venture at the moment. Okay. um, That I've luckily, you know, sort of got a little bit of time to do at the moment. Mm -hmm. Um, I enjoy business. Mm. I think once you you get to that point where you're passionate about stuff, you don't need to switch off. Yeah, right. Okay. Ask me that in 20 years yeah, and I'll yeah. tell you if that's a good I move would. or a bad move. But <laughs> I, I do find it hard to switch on. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. That's interesting. Um, I'd also like to ask about, so you mentioned you got a partner in the business. Um, ha- was that easy for you to share that, um, I suppose you'd say, the responsibility with someone else? I mean, I'm, I'm the type of person that really struggles to do that. Um, and some of the listeners might too, is to actually let go of a bit of control, put a bit of trust in another human being. Um, and, you know, like it, it's tough when you... Because inevitably you're going to disagree on things too. Oh, 100%. Like um, I think uh, the key to any good partnership or any business partnership is to be complete opposites. Of oh, each right. Other okay. And Phil and myself are complete opposites. Okay. So. Um, but we complement each other extremely yeah. well. And yeah. that's why it works. Mm. Um, I love being front of house i love getting in front of clients i love meeting new people i love networking mm. I, I live for those sorts of things um and you know phil is absolutely amazing at, at as i said design development project management mm-hmm. technical things 
like I remember when we first set up the business, I was just in awe at like Phil's ability to be able to be like search for the best programs that were coming out and test them and make sure that they'd work. And there's still programs that we use now, mm-hmm. you know, mm-hmm. uh, he's, yeah, he's a, he's a very good operator. Mm. What about uh, reconciling disagreements? Um, I guess it's one of those things we, I think we recognise our differences in each other. Oh, right. Yep. So I think it's kind of one of those things. I sound like we're in a relationship. <laughs> <laughs> well, you sort of are. You know, that's the thing. Yeah. It, is, it is quite a... a that's, that's the thing too, I reckon, about it is, it is a, it's a quite a close relationship, you know. You, you, spend, you spend a lot of time yeah. in, in, in your business as yeah. a business owner, 100%. So, yeah. so you're spending a lot of time with staff, a mm-hmm. lot of time with clients, mm-hmm. and even more so time with a business partner. Mm-hmm. So um, I think... Um, one of the key things that that's been fantastic for that is um, David, our head of marketing. So okay. he's been he's been very heavily involved in, in our business from the start. He was our first you know paid employee. Mm-hmm. Um, he he we have given him a percentage of the business mm-hmm. um, as well, and he probably is a blend of both my personality and Phil's personality. So often he can be a really good mediator and that sort of thing. Mm-hmm. Um, but the, I, I think the key to resolving things is knowing each other mm-hmm. and putting yourself in someone else's shoes. Mm-hmm. And once again, I guess it comes back to that listening thing. Mm-hmm. Really listening, listening. I saw this quote today. Listening to understand as opposed to listening to just answer the question. Yeah, or wait, wait for your turn to talk. I think I've heard that before too. Yeah. Yeah, cool. Yeah. All right, very interesting. Well, you're doing better than I can in that area, that's for sure. <laughs> so, so. One of those things, you, like I, I always feel like I just get baptised by fire. I learn mm. everything the hard yeah. way, like, but mm-hmm. I learn quick. Mm. Now, I, I think it's a good way of doing it. I mean, this is what I did with this podcast. Um, no idea what I'm doing, um, just let's give it a go. And, you know, learning so much along the way, there's so much to it. But I would have, I, I looked at it and I thought, you know, easy. Oh, Let's do it. You always I, think it's easy before you start. <laughs> yeah. Definitely, definitely. Yeah. No, but I think it's fantastic what you're doing. You're, mm. you're, you're, re- you're really, you know, giving voice to a lot of fantastic people. So it's I'm, tr- I'm trying. <laughs> I don't know. So it's, it's, it's impressive. Super impressive. Um, I, I wanted to just touch on... Um, so we've talked a bit about the um, about the we're going back to marketing for a second if we could um, about the um, social media we've talked a little bit about Google where are you seeing at the moment those spends going to like where are people are more people investing in Google ads or are we moving more to the social channels definitely social channels right yeah like so I think um, to be one hundred percent honest and, and anyone who's thinking of starting up a business. I would definitely tell them to learn as much as possible. And I'll give away some secret sauce. Um, Please do. JohnLuma.com. Okay. So um, John Luma is an absolute expert at Facebook ads. Mm-hmm. Um, and he he is who you should pay attention to in, in, in terms of where people should be spending their budgets because Facebook ads are generating so much return for mm. our clients. Um a lot of I'm, I'm friends with a lot of other agency owners and mm-hmm. that sort of thing who are doing these sorts of things, and you know everyone's saying the same thing. Mm. Um, so jump on it now because it'll be like everything marketers do; yeah, it'll yeah. be ruined, ruined shortly. You reckon? Yeah. Facebook gift. Yeah. Look, I I, I think, um, I think the way that the younger generations are moving, and as the younger generations are becoming more and more consumers, it's so much harder to get their attention with mm-hmm. things and they're cottoning onto things. Um, so I think it's fantastic for now, but like all things, mm. it, it will change and mm. evolve. And uh, what about, so Facebook, even for B2B, you're, you're a B2B, fan? B2B, definitely. Yeah, yeah, cool. Yeah, definitely. I mean, um, it's it's because of the way that you can do it. Like because, yep. because people so freely give away their data and information and everything like that mm-hmm. to platforms such as Facebook, you can target people based upon the company they work at. Mm. You can target people. I mean, we target you know marketing directors or managing yeah. directors of yeah. certain size businesses. Sure. You can target people based on affluence. You can mm. you can do everything with it. Like mm. if you're prepared to invest the time in it, you will get the results out of it. Mm. Or if you're prepared to invest in an agency to do that for you, you will get results out of it. One hundred percent. And talk about the relevance then of Google Ads. In this day and age, Google Ads, I think, 
is never not going to lose its place mm-hmm. because I mean, obviously, I think SEO is fantastic as well. Yep. Because you, it, it's very content based, it's very informative based, and it's it's. I think it can be a fantastic investment to make sure you're ranking organically. Mm-hmm. But I think Facebook ads always has that place in terms of, you've gone out, you've lost your keys, you need a locksmith, mm-hmm. you click the first person that comes up on Google. Mm-hmm. You, you know, you're building a house, you've hit a water main or something like that yep. you need a plumber I, yep. I, I i think it will always have relevance mm. i think the different offerings of google advertising will always have relevance as well in mm-hmm. terms of remarketing and those sorts of things mm-hmm. um, and we use a lot of those channels for our clients still but i think in terms of um, generating leads um, and those sorts of things i truly think facebook I- is just miles ahead at the moment i think and yeah. that comes down to the targeting parameters mm. You sound like, um, correct me if I'm wrong, but it kind of sounds like Google Ads is going to be good for your quick fix type of thing. Um, but more so maybe if you, you want to build that relationship with your audience, um, you know, Facebook's a better place to go. Definitely, yeah. I, th- I think um, it, it's just the fact that you can get um, people to a landing page. You can get, um, I mean, there's like data entry ads mm. now where people can just pre-submit their information um, you can do offer like their name ads. and email. Is that what you mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. offer ads. You yep. can do promoted posts. Like there's just so many more options. Um, even even with lead gen ads, if they don't click on your landing page, mm-hmm. they might click through and like your like your social page, mm-hmm. so you can market to them later. Mm. Um, yeah, I just think that there's there's a lot more that you can do with it. I think mm-hmm. in terms of is Google AdWords a quick fix? I don't necessarily think it's quick. It, it, it is a quick fix, but it's mm-hmm. an expensive fix. Mm. Like It's like anything. You've definitely got to have a strategy in place. Mm. I, I mean, from the consumer point of view, like, oh, sh- like I need a plumber right now. I'll look, you know, I'm looking for a plumber now and I can see the ad. That, that's what I sort yep. of meant. I didn't yeah. mean from the business owner point of view. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. definitely. I, I, I think it's, um, yeah, it's a very solution based. Mm. Yeah. Cool. Um, all right. So what about the, the Snapchats of the world and the, you know, live streaming and all that we've got going on where do you see that going loving it um really i i absolutely yeah. love it I, okay because it's it's just advancing in, mm. in a different way um is it going to make things harder once again yes does it mean <laughs> you have to think differently yes yep. um does it mean more work for the marketer and the client yes mm-hmm. definitely but you can build such um a personal relationship and such a relationship that's based upon storytelling and mm-hmm. authenticity through those channels. Mm. It's crazy. I mean, um, even using it for your own personal use, you give people an insight into your life mm-hmm. um, in, in such a non-fabricated way. Yeah. Whereas the Instagram and everything like that, mm. it's it's positioned in, in, in such a way. Um, do I don't necessarily think that it will happen as quickly as everyone thinks. Mm-hmm. I think everyone thinks that Snapchat and, and um, you know, Instagram Live and all of those sorts of things and, you know, even Facebook Live are, are going to completely change everything. Um, I don't think that that will happen okay. until... I personally think it'll be about 18 months. Oh, wow. Um, I'd love to check back and, and yeah, see yeah. if I was right. Yep. But I think it's a little bit further around the corner for everyone to start making... Uh, for it to be a major marketing channel for every business, mm-hmm. I think it's a little bit further away than people think. Right. Any any opinion on podcasting? I love podcasting. <laughs> yeah. It's a, well, it's it's storytelling. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think that a lot of people. I mean, that's the one thing that I like uh, uh, about the industry is you've got the storytelling element of it, which is very 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 authentic, and then you've got mm-hmm. the targeted, more strategic side of things, which is mm-hmm. the advertising. I think. Um, yeah, podcasting like any form of storytelling is fantastic. Mm. It's it's real. It's it's mm. authentic. Yeah, yeah. It's very hard to fake. Yeah, for an, for an, like an hour long episode, it's very hard to one hundred to <laughs> to put on that game face the whole time. I'd be impressed if someone can do it. Yeah. Um, but I ask every episode. I ask the same question. There's only one epi- one question I repeat every episode. Um, and you did mention you you're quite confident before, but um, ever any challenges with with self doubt? Oh, I, I I'd be lying if I yeah. I'd be lying if I said I didn't. Oh, yeah, one hundred percent. I I think um, you know, it, and I'll refer to a, a a book once again. I'm reading a book by um, Ryan Holiday, 
at the moment and the whole premise uh, of the book is um is that the ego is the enemy is that the one no oh. i'm i'm reading um oh, i need to look it up it's okay. on my ibooks all oh, right it's um the challenge is the way or, or something of that description oh the obstacle is the way the obstacle yeah. is the i haven't way. actually read it that's a fantastic book okay that, that that covers that so mm-hmm. because of the way that we're brought up because of the things we're exposed to because mm-hmm. of we're, we're exposed to the friends who say how are you going to be able to do that all of those sorts of things that that element of self self-doubt is ingrained in mm-hmm. us um whereas if you have a look at kids i mean you know they'll climb up a tree and fall out of it and they're not going to have that self-doubt mm-hmm. until they've failed so mm-hmm. i think I think the key to overcoming self-doubt, and I'm working on trying to do this all of the time, mm-hmm. is just really backing yourself. Mm. Because whatever you're, unless you're doing something really, really evil, mm. and you shouldn't be in this world <laughs> anyway, what, yeah, whatever yeah. you're doing or, or, or the, the, the cons- whatever you imagine in your head the consequence is going to be of mm-hmm. taking risks and doing things and backing yourself, mm-hmm. it's never as bad as it is. Mm. We've all made mistakes. We've all fallen over a couple of yeah. times. But it, it's just really about knowing I've been through worse. I can get through this and I'll find out a way to do it. Mm. Yeah. And so do I have self-doubt? 100%. Yeah. But I'm working out the ways to overcome it. Yeah. And, and can you guess um, what the answer has been to that question from everyone so far in the series? Has everyone said no? Everyone said yes. Everyone said yes. Everyone said yes. Yeah. Really. yeah. So, um, you know, I, j- I just find it an important question um, just so that we – we bring it back down to the human level sometimes and just, rem- you know, we're all, we all have challenges, you know, it's normal, it's okay. 100%. Yeah. Yeah. And I, I couldn't agree more. And I, I think it's, um, you know, and, you know, do I believe in podcasting even more so now because I, I think that, that that human element's important. I think mm-hmm. it's so easy and especially I battle with this in the, in the social media world of things. This is like, it's the gift and the curse, right? So you're putting out an image that people are, viewing as as reality and all mm. that sort of thing all the time and often it removes the human element yeah. of it and yeah. i think it's it's important mm. to be human yeah it's, well, it's, it's, it's so easy to put um put all your you know photos of the beach of you sipping cocktails on instagram and leave out the the 12 hour days you're doing at the office I'm, I'm, <laughs> I'm guilty of that <laughs> it's like easy to I, do I'm, yeah. I'm like mr bravado like yeah. I, I feel like if i'm having self-doubt i just mm-hmm. project more and and that allows me to race through it and it's also one of those things like um yeah self-doubt's real and as you said like you Mm. said everyone's got it Mm. everyone has it Mm. everyone will hide it but everyone Mm. has it Mm. um i I do know that you've got um i remember from back in the day when i first met you you've got a philosophy around um for a, a budding business or a new business owner you said to go to a lot of events yes um, yep. Can you talk us through why that's important? I'm going to refer back to the go-giver in this again. Yep. So the more, okay, so like the the more value you give, the more you'll return. Mm-hmm. And it's also about the more people you serve and the more people you give to, the more will come back to you. Mm-hmm. And I think it's just so important for people, um, you know, I go to things like B and I and those sorts of things. What's what's B and I? Sorry, um, B and I is a, a, a network. It's the largest networking referral group in the world. Oh, okay. So there's one. There's like several chapters in every city. In the oh, world. okay. They, yep. They close billions of dollars of business mm. a year. Mm-hmm. Um, those sorts of things. I also go to every level of business event I used to go to at the start. Mm. Um, I'm I'm a bit more industry focused now, um, but I think it it really just comes down to. Um, and a lot like I think sales is a massive skill mm. and I think every time you're meeting someone you're selling yourself you're presenting yourself you become more confident you get rid of those layers of self-doubt mm-hmm. um, because you're constantly out there and, and you're talking to people mm-hmm. but it also I think there's several benefits of it one is you're building a network of people um, in, in terms of they may have skills that you want to use their services for further on down the track. Mm-hmm. You're getting out of your comfort zone. Mm. Um, and, and I think there's just something that happens when you're consistently around people and you're consistently putting out high mm. energy. Okay. I feel like you know, I'm a big believer in like the law of attraction and those sure. sorts of things. And I feel like when you're putting yourself out there and doing those sorts of things, good things start coming away. Mm. Okay. And it may be in the form of good people. Yeah. I, I found that um, the part about the high energy 
quite interesting because I, I would like to go to more events than I go to, but I really struggle to to bring that energy every night um, when I go there. And I don't, I'm not a particularly extroverted person and, and some of the listeners are probably going to be quite introverted too. Yep. Um, were you always extroverted or did you consider yourself an extrovert? I would consider myself an extrovert now. Okay. Yeah, oh, right. So but like did, you, did you build no, that? I had to build that. Oh, yeah, wow. 100%. Yeah. yeah. Um, like I've all, as I said, I've always listened. Mm-hmm. Um, but I think, I don't know, I've always been good at reading people and understanding people and those sorts of things. And I mm-hmm. think as that confidence builds from meeting more and more people and listening to more and more people and adding value, value to mm-hmm. more and more people, you just build this confidence. Um, like for, for getting that high energy... I guess it comes back to that self-doubt mm. and sitting there and talking to yourself and giving yourself that pep talk of mm. what's the worst thing that's going to happen if I go in here and talk to 10 people. Mm. There's no negativity that's going to come out of that. Yeah, what's especially at a business event, you know, a networking event. It's Every, yeah. Everyone's there for the same... Mm. Everyone wants to meet other mm. people. Mm. You know, you might have that person who's overly eager to sell to you, <laughs> which was never me. Yeah. But... but um, there's not going to be any negativity that comes out of it. Mm. What will be negative though mm. is if you don't go to it because then you're sitting there saying, oh, I wish I went, but mm. I didn't. Mm. So I always try and focus on that. Mm. Is it important to get into a conversation pretty quickly once you've got in the room? Um, I, I feel like it's important to start conversing with anyone when you walk in a, ro- in a room. So okay. like if you, if you walk into a situation, um, I think that you should be trying to to jump into a conversation before you start thinking, should I jump into a conversation? Because mm, mm. often that overthinking yeah. <laughs> holds Guilty. you back, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, yeah. I mean, we're, we've all been there. So yeah. I, I think it's that if you if if you think about it too much, you're not mm. going to do it. Mm. Very interesting. But it but it's imperative in the beginning. You reckon to go to those invets? I yeah. I, I guarantee anyone who's listening right now to mm-hmm. go out to, you know, an event a week for the next between now and Christmas, mm. if you go to one event a week, mm. I would be extremely surprised if you do not find value in it, either mm. financially or, or just friendship building wise. Mm. Be mm. extremely surprised. Yeah. Um, it's, it's just one of those things about business is at the end of the day, a lot of it's about people, right? It comes back to that human element. Yeah. There's only so much, mm. there's only so much you can do, mm-hmm. uh, you know, from a computer or, or, mm. or from that sort of thing. Like it, it, it's so important to, to maintain that human element. Mm. And the more and more I go on with it, the more I, I, I realize that. Because because I started business in the beginning, I thought, you know what, I'll put up a website, I'll put a product on it, people will come and buy it, and I'll just do my own thing. <laughs> you I, know, I, I love won't. that one. I absolutely <laughs> love that. It's like my favorite thing. And yeah. so, or, or someone will say, oh, I spent you know $10,000 on a website. Like, Why am I not making any money? It's mm. like, who knows about it? Mm. You know, it's, mm. it's, it's definitely the case eh? and I think that um, and I, I've, I've seen it honestly like since I've been in business some people that um, you know might have might have been introverted and that sort of thing who have gone down the path of going to events and doing all of those sort of things and they've built that confidence and my right. confidence is well and truly wow. built more and more and more that's, that's okay. my goal is that I can be able to talk to absolutely anyone mm. and not have any nerves about it Mm. That's my goal. Mm. Without alcohol. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Sometimes yeah. that's hard. <laughs> um, now, that, I think that's really valuable insight there. I appreciate that because that's, um, you know, I, I think that will be heartening um, to hear that um, that can be built because, you know, so like I've, I've had times myself where I'm like, you're never going to be able to go to an event and talk to five people. Like that's five people. Like they might not, you know, they don't know who you are. They're not going to want to listen to you. The big one for me actually is they're already in a conversation. That's my self-talk that tries to talk me out of, um, you know, going up and, and talking to to other business owners. I always do like the, like if, uh, if I'm trying to, to, yeah, if there's two people and I want to talk to one specifically or I want to, you know, jump into that conversation, I'll always say, hey, are you guys right for a drink or anything? My name's ah. Joe, I work at such and such. And often because you're a stranger, they're not going to say, Hey, yeah, can you go get me a drink? Oh. They say, hey, <laughs> I'm such and such. Yeah. And then you just stand there and they start including oh, right. in the conversation. That's brilliant. Yeah, yeah. That's There's brilliant. all little things like that I've learned over, over time. That's, that's, I love that. That's yeah. gold. Yeah. That's gold. Icebreakers. <laughs> <laughs> so we'll have to wrap it up soon, but have you got any other um, 
any other tips for new for new business owners or, or people looking to get into the entrepreneurial game that you wish you had known when you started? I think it would come back to that just do it thing. The right, the, yeah. the the I'm gonna oh, I don't know I don't want to sound too bleak, but like people who who are older and that sort of thing, like you you speak to some people who are older and they just say, mm-hmm. I wish I had have done this. Mm-hmm. I I regret not doing this. And some of the ideas are fantastic. Mm. And you knew if they had the ex- execution that it probably would be something that's used in our everyday lives. Mm-hmm. So I think the the thing that you have to do is not just have an amazing idea, you have to execute. Mm-hmm. You have to do it. No one else is going to do it for you. Mm-hmm. You don't want to have regrets. Mm-hmm. It's as simple as that. It's wh- Whether it's taking that first step and going to a networking event and talking mm-hmm. to more people, whether it's mm-hmm. sitting down and planning out an idea that you have and and finding out if you if you're going to actually do it i think yep. it's it comes back to and we'll go back to brand really quick as well mm. but it's like the greatest slogan of all time of one of the greatest brands of all time is that yeah, just do it just do it yeah like to like you do not want to have regrets mm. and and i even like I, i've been to a few events recently where you see like the q and a um and this the, the the expert or the speaker on whoever's being asked the questions you know, it can be up to about 30% of the time they're kind of like, just do it and see what happens. Like, you know, people are looking for that insight but they're sort of, I guess it's a form of procrastination in a, procrastination in a way if you are looking for things that aren't, like reasons why it isn't going to work. Oh, but what about this? What about this? It's like, well, yeah, but what about but if, what if it does? <laughs> yeah, yeah. But what if it does? What if it does? Yeah, uh, I think it's, yeah, be positive, push on and, and do it. Mm. Um. All right. I want to know too before we go. Um, any advice for managing um, staff or employees? Well, my my advice for that would be have amazing business partner <laughs> and amazing yeah. head of marketing who do all of that. Thank yeah, goodness. Yeah. But um, what what I've always found same thing about uh, is about building relationships with people. Mm. Is is take the time to get to know them, mm-hmm. get to know their personality, and and all of those sorts of things because. It's the same from a sales perspective. This, the the technique you may use to to do sales or, or close a deal isn't going to work for all personality types. So I would say instead of using IQ, use EQ. Mm. No, very Gary Vaynerchuk of you. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> um, cool. Uh, where's some places we can find you? Um, I'm on facebook uh yep. check, definitely check out the studio culture facebook page we're, yep. we're doing some cool things through there yep the studio culture instagram mm-hmm. um linkedin i'm okay I'm, i love linkedin um yep. twitter um mm-hmm. but yeah I, w- I would suggest the the place where i like to share the most insights and and get into conversation is either through linkedin or through our studio culture blog so okay that's just um, uh, am I doing a shameless plug right yeah, now? Yeah, go like, for it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. So I'm um, just studio-culture.com.au. Yep. Check out our blog, um, and we're very active in replying to comments and that sort of thing there. So we share a lot of insight. We try and make sure, like when Pokemon Go came out, mm-hmm. we had an article out the next day. When we cool. hear about algorithm updates, we've got an article out the next day. We stop work and make sure we've got cutting edge info out there. So Brilliant. Very helpful. Yeah, that's great. Um, Joe, it's been amazing. Thanks Fantastic. for being with us. Thank you very much for having me. I really appreciate it and I appreciate it. Yeah. Thanks for listening to this episode of the Be The Push podcast. Show notes can be found at bethepush.com forward slash podcast and clicking on the relevant episode link. I appreciate your company and look forward to talking to you again soon.